That was Lisa Furukara with Akiru. She's been performing in Wellington as part of the Armageddon Pulp Expo, and she joins us now. That was delicious. Thank you. <laughs> Great to meet you. How are you? Nice to meet you. Thank you for having me. Oh, no problem. How were the performances on the weekend? Oh, it was uh, fabulous. It was really fun. Really fun. Because fans are... They just love meeting the people that make the stuff they enjoy, don't they? Well, it's, it's so... Um, it's such an honour to have an outlet in a country, whether it's America or New Zealand, away from Japan, and to be able to sing in Japanese yeah. and to be able to reach out to another culture where people want to learn about um, the Japanese culture or about, you know, through entertainment, through yeah. anime. And it's, um, it's, it's really fun. It's really fun. Did you come from a musical family? Because I believe you started playing the piano when you were three. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I did. Um, it's kind of funny. My, my Japanese father is a pedal steel guitar player and he loves country music. And <gasps> my uncle plays the banjo, you know, this Japanese family. My Japanese grandfather was a Stephen Foster fan, so oh. was always playing, you know, the little Tim Pan Alley yeah, songs. And, yeah. <laughs> so, that's quite American styles of music, though. Yes, it is. And so... You know, I was, grew up around the Japanese Enka singers and the folk singers, but yeah. also very much uh, influenced by the folk music of America right. through my Japanese family as well. So That's really it's, interesting. <laughs> yeah. But you were seven when you moved to America. Yes. Was that a culture shock for you? It was. Um, you know, there were a lot of lot of things like, oh, okay, you know, the the bathtub, you know, you have to, like <laughs> you can't let it overflow. I mean, no, I mean, there were so many things that were a culture shock. But my mother's Scottish American, and she's an English teacher, so oh. growing up in Japan it was full immersion English with her, As and well. full immersion Japanese with my father. So, no, yeah. I found a quote somewhere where you said you used to have a shy voice. I yeah, I um. I was shy for for so long, and I, then I had a vocal teacher when I went to college, and uh, she said, "Lisa, it's time to be a woman now." <laughs> Is that <laughs> you know? out your voice? Yeah, and uh, I'm very appreciative. And it to worked her. really well. So, oh, well, thank you. <laughs> so, how did you start getting involved with anime films? Because you know you've done things like Ghost in the Shell, which is just amazing. But you're not doing the whole scores; you're just doing like songs for them. Um, yes, well, I worked on a piece uh, actually called One Piece, and it's uh, an anime show about pirates. Right. And I uh, worked on the English version of an opening song. Right. And so that was very interesting to hear the Japanese and to take that and turn it into, you know, the yeah. English English version. Um, but I do a lot, of, a, a lot of arrangements of anime songs, and the whole the whole way that I started to get into this yeah. was um, originally a folk musician and I was performing at Japanese cultural festivals, a little place called Japan Fest in Atlanta, Georgia in the yeah. States and Stone Mountain and I was playing Georgia on my mind in Japanese <laughs> and it actually was the year that Ray Charles passed away so oh. it was, you know, a tribute to yeah. him and these guys who were running the anime convention in Tennessee said we want you to be our first performer at our anime convention. Right. And said, What's that? <laughs> <laughs> you like, must have seen them though back well, in Japan. I watched anime, you know, all, yeah. all my life. Akira. Oh sure, <laughs> right. Akira and Doraemon oh, and yeah, you know Astro same. Boy, all those titles. But all um, the old ones. Yeah. Too. Um, but uh, I didn't I had no idea how big these conventions were and how prevalent they were all over you know the world, all over the country. And you can travel around so. the world and do them as well. It's, it's great because I love to travel and I love meeting new people. Perfect. So. Now, you were telling me before, because you're performing in Christchurch mm -hmm. uh, down there, you're going to do Pukarikariana in Japanese. Yes. <laughs> Where did you get the idea for it from? Well, it started with George on my mind. Right. And then the guys in Tennessee said, we want you to come, but with the one condition that you can do Tennessee waltz in Japanese. So then it became this tradition where every new place I went to, I tried to translate a song into Japanese. So, for example, Country Roads in West Virginia, right. you know, Inaka no michi ni What does, what does you know, Bukari Kariana sound like? Um, let's see. Um, Utsukushimizu. You know, so I'm, I'm going to 
be doing that. And uh, the plan is in the next year to release an album of these songs right. that are translated into Japanese and to offer that. Um, it's oh, it's been really Oh, fun, well, Lisa, so. what a pleasure <laughs> to meet you. Um, good luck in Christchurch. I think that's going to go you. down a treat. And good luck with your music as well. Thank you so much for having oh, me. Oh, thank you. <laughs> now, coming up, Matai Smith teaches us how to tell the time in Maori. I wonder if he can do it in Japanese as well. But Ara is here first.